How about a magic trick? It was the most fun I've had with a character, um, hands down. I'm gonna make this pencil disappear. <laughs> it's... it's gone. And I... You know, I would have actually played the Joker uh, if it was a. Tonight's entertainment. If the budget for Dark Knight was hundred thousand dollars, truly. I only have one question. Just this character was too good to turn down. Why so serious? And I'd already seen uh, this world he'd created in uh, Batman Begins, and and so I knew there there wasn't room for the old interpretation. There was there was in fact an opportunity for a new version of the Joker. Never start with the head. The victim gets all fuzzy. He can't feel the neck. I wanted to see what you'd do. And I, I sat down in front of Chris and I gave him my ideas and they were identical to his ideas. Don't talk like one of them. You're not. Even if you'd like to be. I had an idea of what the Joker would be in the world. You've changed things. We created it of Batman Begins. There's no going back. And to me, it was creating a sort of psychologically credible anarchist. <laughs> a force of anarchy, a force of chaos, a, a purposeless criminal, oh, yeah. uh, a psychopath. To me, that was the most frightening form of evil. I'm only burning my half. The, the enemy who has no rules, the enemy who's not out for anything, who can't be understood. This town deserves a better class of criminal. Can only be fooled. And I'm gonna give it to him. You know, he pretty well locked himself up in a hotel in his apartment for a month or so to sort of galvanise the upcoming character in his own mind. That was typical of Heath on any movie. And I think this was just a, a whole new level. And I, I locked myself away for six weeks in a room and I kind of came up with this creep. <laughs> Walk around like a, a madman in finding posture, finding stance. Finding his voice is very important because when you find the voice, you find the, the breath within the voice. My father was a drinker and a fiend. He would do a, a, a voice modulation, and one of the times when we were face to face, he does this really, you know, kind of it's Tom Waits ish. I have a growing level of popularity uh, throughout the uh, intercontinental United States. So. <laughs> He's even asking us, us. Enough! From the clown. The guys who were day players and everything else. Uh, you know, what do you think? Do I really look like a guy with a plan? You know what I am? I'm a dog chasing cars. I wouldn't know what to do with one if I caught it. You know, I just do things. The hospital room one was kind of intriguing because his sister Kate used to dress him up in a nurse's outfit. He looked pretty funny in a nurse's outfit when he was a kid and he looked pretty funny in the nurse's outfit in the film, so. <laughs> I grew up in a household of girls, so there were very few Batman comic books lying around. And I, I watched Batman on my TV show kind of thing, like the early kind of Batman shows, and, you know, where they have the wire and the cape when they're pretending to walk up the side of the building kind of thing. I really loved Tim Burton's Batman movie. Wait till they get a load of me. I think if Tim Burton was doing The Dark Knight and it was going to be a Tim Burton-esque film and he asked me for some odd reason to, to bring the Joker back to life, I, I wouldn't do it because Jack Nicholson did it perfectly. It would be a crime to, to, to follow Jack Nicholson's footpath that he so heavily stamped into uh, to my memory of the Joker. I mean, I, I adore what he did and him in general. Jack Nicholson has that face and that voice and, you know, he's going to be interesting if he just read the alphabet. And so that he brings that with every character he, he plays. But Heath Ledger, to pull out that performance, come on. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. When we were shooting the uh, scene where he comes into the party, there was a crowd that side of the camera and this side of the camera. It was a very large crowd. So he said, this feels like walking onto a stage. I wasn't prepared for so many people. How do I play this? I said, well, well, you're a psychopath. So they're, they're your toys. <laughs> you play with your toys. 
no. You know, but 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 you know, he's he's not just going to be uh, scary. I mean, there there are a few surprises. Uh, I think you know. So that that's why I, I'm uh, I'm in this monster machine of a movie. <laughs> where, you know, popcorn movie, if you will, is is um is it was a purely a, a character choice. I can honestly say that. And and um so yeah, I I um. Uh, I am to blame and I can't complain from this point on from what happens from that movie because for me like What a success is is I mean the only time that I'm alive and living and expressing and feeling and and Relating is 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 when I'm on set and that time between action and cut and so that's the only thing that's really important is how that experience is and and how that experience will affect my life and what I have to give from my life to that experience and everything that happens after that is just irrelevant. You know, it's kind of, um, if it's a success, great. If it's not, great. Fine. You know, it's, um, it, it affects you or it doesn't, but it's, it, it, that shouldn't, in my mind, it shouldn't kind of dictate what your choice is. Um, I, I, I just want to enjoy myself. I want to learn more. I want to work with good people, um, creatively and, and as people, really just good people. And I think the movie is, is going to be awesome. Like I, I, I'm very excited for it. I haven't seen anything, nothing. But just from what I hear, I think it's going to, uh, I think it's going to be good.